Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie Yin, one time professional Go player from American and Chinese Go Association. Since New York Institute of Go was founded in 2016, and after I did a live commentary on AlphaGo Kyrgyz game, I have received a lot of requests from players to ask me to open a YouTube channel so that they can learn more about Go. Myself, along with the New York Institute of Go, is proud to present you this series and spread this great game all around the world. So here we are. Our first video is about um, how do we play Go in 10 minutes. This is the first one. This is the part one. So pretty much this is what the Go board looks like. And we have uh, two players, one player with black stones and one player with white stones. And the goal board consists of 19 horizontal lines and 19 vertical lines with 361 intersection points on the board. And black goes first, white goes next. So every stone has to be played on the intersection points. It can be in the square or on the line. So it has to be on the intersection points. It takes turns to put down the stones on the board. Once you play the move on the board, you can never take it back or remove it. It's there permanently. So you have to think before you play. Once you put it, you, there's no regret. Okay, so then what's, how do we win the game? What's the ultimate goal for this game? Um, this game in China, it's called the uh, Wei Qi. And it was uh, it originated from China 4,000 years ago, and a lot of people uh, say this is pretty much like our human lives. And the character of Wei means the surrounding. So this game is pretty much like a surrounding game. So the first example is once you surround one area on the board, any area on the board, all of the surrounded area is your, is your territory and every intersection point is your score. We call, we call it point. So now how many points does black have? A one, two, three, four, five, and we have a three here. Three times five is a 15. So at the end of the game, whoever surround the most territory wins the game. Let's say if white surround this corner and white only gets night point, and like what I mentioned earlier, at the end of the game, we're going to count all of your points as your territory, whoever has the most wins. Um, so this game is also called a surrounding game. And I have mentioned it, a lot of people say this game is like our human lives. So we need to, and pretty much everything, um, every planet, every animal needs to uh, have air to breathe. So every stone on the board also has an air. And we call this liberty. So if you put the one stone on the board, this stone has a four liberties. Sometimes I like to call it air. But once the air, all of the airs are blocked by black, then this stone is dead, it's captured. <clears throat> so how about this move? We have a special name of this move. The move before you capture. If white ignore this move, you're gonna capture it next. So this move is called the Atari move. The move before capture, it's called Atari. So once you see Atari move, you have to be careful because you have to play one more stone to save that stone. So after you play it here, now you have a one, two, and three liberties. So then it's impossible for, for black to capture now. How about I have a two white stones on the board? Then how many liberty does white have? Okay, let's try it. So we have to block here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here. So two white stones have a six liberties. How about the diagonal directions? Are there the liberties? Do we need to play these four moves to capture the two whites? The answer is no, because um, the liberty is it's, it's like, it's similar like the road for the stone to escape. So let's say if I don't block here, if white plays here, white, take, white escaped from this direction. But if I block here, even though white can play here, but there's no road here to connect these two stones. 
So then these four diagonal directions or these four diagonal moves are not the liberties. <coughs> How about I have a three stones on the board? Three white stones on the board. How many liberty does white have now? We have the block here and here and here, here, all the way. We have to completely block white and take or capture these three stones. So these three white stones have eight liberties. And there's one more important thing for you to remember. Once you block the last air or the liberty, you have to remember to, to take them and remove them from the board and to keep them on your side. Never return the stones to your opponent because at the end of the game, not only we're going to count how much territory you have, plus how many stones you capture. So whoever has the most in total wins. Okay. <clears throat> so <clears throat> when we have a three stones on the board straight, there are eight liberties. How about I have a three stones are bent? Is it still eight? The answer is no. Even there, they have the same amount of uh, stones on the board, but they have a different amount of liberties. Because let's try it. So I have the block here since there's a line here, and here, and here, and over here, 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 and here. And how many black stones did I use? I've used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So. In conclusion, these bent three white stone only have a seven liberties, not four liberties we talked about earlier. It's because these two stones shared one liberty at the same time. So that's why this shape has one less liberty than this shape. Okay. <clears throat> then now I have a question for you. Since black plays first and white play next, so which color do you like better? Probably everyone likes to play black because black goes first, but black has an advantage. Um, so we have a special rule for that. Um, at the end of the game, after we count all of the uh, all of the territory, black and white, and then we have to either subtract to seven and a half points from black's territory or add seven and a half points to white's territory. That's called a Komi because black goes first, black has an advantage to start the game, but at the end, in order to be fair, white has to um, add seven and a half points or subtract the seven and a half points from, from black. Okay. <clears throat> So in Go, is unlike other board games, other board games, every piece have a certain way to go, but in Go game, every piece, every stone is equal before you put down on the board. So you can basically, you can start anywhere you want, but how about you start on the first line? Is it smart? Uh, since this is the edge of the board, that's the last line on the board. In order to not be captured, if we start on the first line, we only have three liberties. If we start from the corner, we only have a two liberties. And if we start from second line, about second line, let's say start from fourth line, then this stone has four liberties. So where do we start? And you got the answer already. Of course, we never start from the first line and also that line is called the dead line because that's very easy for your opponent to capture you. So remember, we never, never start from the first line. Okay, um, so as I mentioned earlier, you can start anywhere you want, but there's only one area you can never play. That's called illegal point. Once a stone is captured or the space without any liberty left, that spot is called an illegal point. Because once black plays here, there's no more liberty left. That means the stone dies automatically. So then that spot is called illegal point. Then how about this move? Is this an illegal point? The answer is no, that's not a legal point because after white black place here, there's still one more liberty left. So once you have an air or liberty on the board, you're allowed to play there. 
But this is definitely not a smart move because after you go here, what will capture that move? But still, that's not a legal move. You can still play. Okay, so after black plays here and white play ignored that move, and the question is now is the next move is a legal illegal point or not an illegal point? The answer is that's illegal point because after black goes here, there's no more air left. All of the airs or the liberties are already blocked by white. So that spot is a legal point. Okay. And black says, okay, so since this is a legal point, I cannot play there. How about I'm gonna spend, use a couple moves on the outside. And then is this a still illegal point for black or not illegal point? Maybe it looks very confusing. So the answer is, this is not a legal point. Why? Because let's look at white shape over here. These two white stones only have one liberty left. So once you block the last liberty, what's gonna happen to that stone? You're gonna capture it. So it means this is not an illegal point anymore. Instead, this is a capture move. So once the space or the spot is a, it's becomes to a capture move, the illegal point is no longer illegal because you can capture your opponent's stone. And the last important thing is, once you capture your opponent's stones, please remember to take the stones before your opponent played the next move down because it happens to a lot of my students' game. So black played here and black forgot to take these two stones and after a few rounds, and then when they look back this situation, nobody knows who captures first because blacks also don't have any liberty left. So remember, once you capture, you have to remove the stones first. Okay, um, that's pretty much about our first part of introduction of Go. Hope, hope you all like it and uh, don't go away. We're gonna start the part two next.